he struck terror into London's East End in the late 1800s. One known theory is that his murders may have involved the sinister use of black magic rituals. The case of the unsolved Victorian serial killer, Jack the Ripper, is perhaps the world's greatest unsolved murder mystery. But what happens if I solved it? Would you believe me? Uh, I guess we'll find out. everybody and quick just to set it off if you wanted two stories an extra story for this weekend then you gotta start looking at my community tab because I said if you guys get to 20 likes which means in a day or at least before Friday then I would do two stories but it's just reaching 20 likes now so I'll be a good guy and I'll still put one out for this week but I'm trying to get your engagement, so next time be sure to check out the community page, look at what I'm posting, and make sure to hit that like button. But we are gonna jump straight into this story, and it's a well-known one, but with a new look at it. So before we jump in, if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, do that right now, and you might as well hit the like button while you're at it, because, well, it's free, and it helps me out a lot. So that's it. And as of now, it's time to slip into a mine that's not our own. Let's go. Jack the Ripper operated in the city of London back in 1888. And thanks to the newly burgeoning tabloid style newspapers at the same time, his horrific mutilations of prostitutes kept all of England gripped by the salacious reporters who covered each new murder in extremely grisly detail. And although there was already a very high murder rate in the nation's capital, driven mostly by the extreme poverty in which the majority of people lived, there was now a new killer roaming the streets of the East End. Each murder was carried out with the most awful butchery and they were very, very similar in style. The women that were victims had some of their organs removed with a knife, with surgical precision. I want you to remember that, surgical precision. And Jack the Ripper was never caught. And dozens of suspects have been put forward in the last century or so, but there is fierce disagreement on the accuracy of these suspects. And opinions are extremely divided on who the real culprit was. Suspects range from a surgeon, to the queen, to artist Walter Sickart, to even the possibility that it was a female midwife. Others say it could have been more than one person. But after doing a substantial amount of research, myself, along with researcher Ivor Edwards, believes it was a man by the name of Rosalind Donston. Or rather, that was his alias, but his real name was Robert Donston Stevenson. And Edwards took many years to come to this conclusion. And almost everything about it makes sense. I mean, take a look at this. By meticulously mapping and aligning the location in which the bodies were found, he discovered that they formed points of a cross. And by joining up the murder sites, he discovered that it created a satanic symbol of occult worship. So just imagine one of those detective boards where you put the little tacks on the map and then you string them together. That's what he was doing. When all five locations were linked, it created the Vesica Pisces, a fish-like symbol used in early Christianity, but it was also used in satanic rituals. The Vesica Pisces literally means the bladder of the fish in Latin and is a symbol which is made with two circles of the same radius intersecting in such a way so that the center of each circle lies on the circumference of the other. Now Robert Stevenson was a military surgeon, but he was also suspected of being a practicing occultist who had lived in Africa 
And it was during this time that he had told his close friend he had been involved in ritually killing at least two people. At the time, black magic was believed to be actively practiced in Africa by witch doctors. And during alleged rituals, body organs of the victims would be removed and often cannibalized. I hope you're already starting to see with the surgeon precision and with the organs being removed, that's another clue. Stevenson was also discovered to have written on esoteric and occult topics under the pen name Tautri Delta. Now for the Theosophical Journal, he wrote an article called African Magic. In this, he says that for the occultist practitioner, the very least of the crimes necessary for him to attain that power sought out is murder by which the victim is essential to the sacrifice that's provided. And though the price is awful, the power is real. Then in the article, he also goes on to make reference in particular to a certain portion of the body of a harlot, which of course could be interpreted as referring to the prostitutes, Jack the Ripper, mutilated then dissected. Infamous occultist Aleister Crowley took an interest at that time. He related that after the murders had ceased, an article appeared in the Pall Mall Gazette by a person using the name Tatria Delta, who said that there was a book from the Middle Ages which describes a means by which an occult practitioner can gain the absolute power that he so craves. Crowley said that the method described in this ancient book was identical to the East End Jack the Ripper mutilations. When the serial killer was at large, Stevenson was arrested by the police twice on suspicion that he indeed was Jack the Ripper. However, because he was a resident patient in the local hospital during his time, they decided that there's no way he could possibly be the serial killer. Those that believed he was the killer, however, have since put forth the argument that he could very easily have slipped out of the hospital unnoticed at night to commit these murders. And they even cite the fact that the Elephant Man was in that same hospital at that same time. And it was known that gawkers often crept into the hospital at night to catch a glimpse of the Elephant Man, successfully evading any hospital guards. So if they could get in and out unchallenged, then so too could Stevenson, they argued. Adding to this is the fact that four of Stevenson's close friends actually reported him to the police because they believed he was indeed Jack the Ripper. However, he remained just one of the many suspects. And for now, the enigma continues as well. So did I really find out who Jack the Ripper actually was well as always i'll let you decide thank you guys so much for watching like i said make sure to like this it really helps me and it really helps this channel get out there and make sure to also check out my community posts i post once every couple of days and i hope you guys have an absolutely lovely day and if you want to keep watching click here 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 i'll see you guys next time peace